Welcome back to our press preview, which is the Sunday Papers tonight with Kate and Alex, as we head for The Observer. And we have more politics. This time it is perhaps the vote on Syria. We still don't know if it'll take place. But however, if it does, more than 50 Labour MPs will defy their leader, Jeremy Corbyn. Cross-party bid for military action, it states there. Yeah, and, of course, the vote was relatively close in the last Parliament, uh, and there were more Labour MPs then. So you would presume, if the Tory vote holds together on action in Syria, that they would succeed. But, moreover, it's an important message, and an early one, about Corbyn's leadership. Um, he may make a strategic concession and say this is a free vote, yeah, yeah, conscious yeah. vote, so as to avoid the signal that um, it's actually anything to do with him, his leadership that people are breaking away from. And John McDonnell, his shadow chancellor, is hinting that that may be the case. But nevertheless, I think it's hard, isn't it, to escape the fact that it has ramifications for his leadership if he has a rebellion like that? It's too but is it a rebellion? That's, that's, that's the question, isn't it? Because obviously he was heard at the Stop the War Coalition. He's I mean, he's very anti-war. But people there, are, I think MPs, are very tormented about what to do right... What to do, what, what, as, what's as the right thing to do, time, as yeah. they were last time. We, t we discussed a lot last time. A lot of people had very, were very... You know, they said to themselves, yes, we've got to do something, mm. but is this the right thing to do? But and, given the Scottish it, National Party and the fact that David Cameron's only got a majority of 12, 12. could he still actually swing it, even with, he, say, 50 he could, No, he, if, 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 if 50 Labour MPs rebelled, he would win, unless there was something truly unexpected on the Tory benches. Mm. But if that failed to materialise, and there will, of course, be some Tory rebels who say we shouldn't be intervening in the affairs of others and some abstainers, then he might be in trouble. But I think it's interesting, we haven't seen the inside, but um, The Observer's got a joint piece by Andrew Mitchell, who, a uh, parche uh, plebgate, is something of a kind of you know, former international development secretary, a yeah. bit of a conscience guy in the Tory party, Written, co written with Joe Cox, who's a Labour MP and used to be the head of policy at Oxfam. So, uh, demonstrating this is not a strict party political issue at all. And I, I think when we look at what's ha the discussion this week about bombs what, in, in America, about what happened from the US and the hitting the Médecins Sans Frontières hospital, uh, in, in the, the, Afghanistan, this is yeah. what many people are thinking. They're saying, yes, we have to do something, but is bomb, a bomb the right thing? They can hit the wrong targets, they and can hit is it humanitarian right to get targets. Russia is flying when planes Russia is flying right, planes. Yeah, yeah. And I think we've had, we've had a discussion quite a lot and Alex I think one of your principles is that if you're going to go in you should go in with troops. Oh, you can't enforce it from the air. Yeah. And There's and another was... Corbyn story I don't know if you've got. Yeah I was just going to backtrack because uh, that was back on the Sunday Telegraph so let's move that back. Um, I just wonder is, is this a bit thin? Uh, well Corbyn's IRA links reveal well I mean clearly there was uh, s uh, some sort of link with the Republican Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Corbyn was always uh, when he spoke openly about these things, and he's a bit more kind of uh, considered in his tone now as leader of his party, but in the past he has for some decades expressed a, an open belief in a united Ireland. It's a respectable intellectual principle with, with which I completely disagree, given the views of people in Northern Ireland, but it's something you can argue. What I think is not justifiable is the support that he gave to IRA Sinn Féin up to including and after the time of the Brighton bombing. And what this piece in The Telegraph talks about is that there was a, a, a left-wing magazine of which Corbyn was on the editorial board that wrote an article praising, not just saying, you know, you've got to try and think about the cause behind it, but praising the 1984 Brighton bombing. Although, although we should add Mr. Mr Corbyn did not actually write that himself. He was on the editorial board. Yeah. But I think, more, I, actually, when you say, is this thin, mm. I don't think this takes us forward very much because no. we already know that that amazing right-wing demagogue Neil Kinnock condemned Corbyn's support for IRA Sinn Féin mm. when he was leader of the Labour Party. So this is not news. Yeah. It might be helpful for the public to be better informed about Jeremy Corbyn if they didn't know about him before, but it's not really news. And okay. I, th I think also, it, number one, it was a long time ago, and number two, thankfully, the troubles, the difficulties yeah, that the in Ireland are, are over. You we either have believe a peaceful, in... We have a peaceful union. No, um, no, no thanks to those who supported terrorism. You either believe in violence did, or you don't. But I wonder whether his key, his key demographic, his key supporters, are going to say this was a long time ago, and things like the editorial board, sure. and there was a member and there was an article, it does begin to seem a tiny bit tenuous. Especially if, you, if you're then going to actually argue, I don't believe in violence in, in uh, terms of international relations, I don't bomb Syria. I believe but, in violence yeah. when it's in the UK. Anyway. Welcome back. More from the Sunday Papers with Kate and with Alex as we head now for the front page of The Observer. Uh, and it is the latest if it does take place, vote on Syria. Of course, David Cameron dented by the failure to swing it last time. But suggestion now that he may have the help of 50 Labour MPs who would... Well, would they defy Corbyn or is it going to be a free vote? 
Well, that is the question, isn't it, is whether or not Corbyn is going to say this is a free vote, this is a conscience vote, um, because many people are in very clear uh, two minds about this. But we, we saw that before with the vote failing, failing before yeah. with Cameron. We saw it indeed in America when there, there were lots of questions and problems over the vote there. It is that people are saying to themselves, we need to help Syria, something needs to be done, but is this the right thing to do? And bombs miss, they hit the wrong targets, they hit Medicines on Frontiers Hospital, which is obviously something... That, that in Afghanistan, yeah. yeah. Which was something, that could, you know, if that were to happen, which possibly might, it's, it's going to be a disaster. So what, I think this is a, a two-pronged story, really. It's saying it looks like we are going to end up discussing bombing mm. Syria once more, and also if we do, there may be 50 MPs who choose to say, Corbyn is, of course, is not is going to say very clearly, let's not do it. But there are going to be MPs who disagree with him. But whether or not that's going to be enough to swing the vote, because there may be Tory MPs who swing the other way, because Correct. there were quite a lot of rebe there were quite a lot of Tory rebels last time You're it was it. last time it was voted on. Yeah, and, and I think if, you know, people, are, Cameron as well, is going to fear failing again. Cor Corbyn's position is clear and consistent. He opposes British mili military intervention. Um, I think that's a completely reasonable position. Uh, it's one obviously that some people in his party disagree with. The question that I have about this issue, and it's why I'm now uncertain on it, is whether, because the question of intervention by us has changed. It's now Russians in the yeah. air and yeah. active in that environment. So it's not just committing on a humanitarian basis yeah. to help yeah. um, people in that country. It's getting in the same airspace as a volatile power led by Vladimir Putin. Now, you can think what you like about Putin, many of us have negative views. Um, you've still got to understand the fact that he's there is a real prospect of things going very badly wrong with that. And that must weigh in the debate yeah, too. Or, or we could be dropping ordnance on Iranians without realising it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's going to be a very confused picture with disparate elements in, in uh, different sections well, of Syria. I, so it's Yes, and I think what, what's saying at the term, there's going to be a launch of the all-party group on Syria in, on Tuesday, saying that one thing that I think we can all agree on, that we need to try and have urgent diplomatic efforts to bring the president to the negotiating yeah. table, because that's something that I think on okay. all sides we need to have some kind of negotiation. Elsewhere on the foreign policy front, of course, oh. Turkey uh, suffering its own difficulties. Back to the Sunday Times front page. Bombs kill, well, 95, 96, 97, yeah. the, the figure's still changing, but clearly Clearly, with this taking place in the capital, Ankara now, uh, President Erdogan denouncing it a heinous attack, uh, a terrorist attack, as, as they've indicated. And Still it, no indication who's... who's well, mm. It's clearly connected to our last story yeah. in one of potentially two ways. So the Syrians um, and the Turks have had this semi-uneasy truce for some time, and um, contrary to the desire of the West, the Turks were not allowing Western powers to use Encirlik Air Force or use their airspace mm. to commit strikes against the Syrians. Those rules have changed now, and the Turks themselves have been committing strikes against people they say are ISIS, many observers say are the PKK and their own Which, which is a Kurdish uh, separatist group. Exactly. Yeah. So the two prime suspects for this awful attack in, uh, in Ankara are one, IS, having their own, having their revenge against Turkey, aligning themselves with the West, or two, the PKK, so the, the Kurdish separatists who want to break away from Turkey. And Sh Shireen Tadros, then, our Middle East correspondent, was indicating you know, that the immediate anger and, and the protests then, as a result of this, were against the Turkish government yes, itself. Yes, saying here that there have been massive anti-government protests, yeah. people obviously feeling they don't feel safe, they don't feel secure, and I think it's obviously very upsetting and, and difficult to see, isn't it? Because, you know, the, the, the rather shocking moment that it exploded and certainly and 68 people killed at the scene 180 people have in, are injured and I think we are we are all now waiting to cl see who claims responsibility for yeah this and a very volatile attack. political situation of course with the outcome of the um, forthcoming election still not uh, really and uh, clear but for the Turks in that political environment strikes against the Kurdish yep. separatist is wildly popular yeah so they took an opportunity um, in international discourse to sort out what they saw as their own backyard disputes committing many strikes against the PKK with a few strikes against supposed ISIS as well. But well, really complicating the whole picture. Absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. OK, well, let's, let's look at something that's related to this that you've spotted on the inside page of the Star, page 9. UK bomb experts sent to Morocco. Let's just move this across and see the relevance of this. Uh, bomb disposal teams uh, sent because of fears terrorists are planning to target British tourists. Well, yes, well, this uh, is all a, a speculative... I mean, it's all a... Yeah, a I was going to say... The, a defence source says that MI6 is doing this. I mean... This is not an official we, not warning an official at all, warning, no. Not an official warning, not even an official um, uh, word from, you know, the Ministry of Defence or... Advice on the Foreign Office website saying there's a high threat of terrorism, but as attacks could be indiscriminate and target 
places visited by it's foreigners. It's a pretty well. specific story, though. Well, look, I don't remember the last time we had the star on. Well done, it's a proper story. Yeah. You know, and it's one, it's great to have two big foreign policy stories on the front of two of the Sundays, and two, it's it great to see often, this from yeah. the star. This is a genuine, interesting story about um, British troops being committed in an advisory capacity to assist a, uh, another power in their ability to conduct defensive operations, that is to say, bomb disposal. It's something that, for many reasons, connected to things we've been discussing tonight and IRA and so forth, it's something we British troops are exceptionally good at. Yeah. So um, I think it's great that we share this kind of knowledge with uh, powers grappling with that kind of terrorism. And, and the, the other aspect, I mean, there's a picture there, of course, of, of the scene on the Tunisian beach where the tourists were shot, and yet we now have the, the Tunisian reformers, if you like, recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize. So there is a different side to this picture of, of North Africa. There is a different side and I think, you know, it's the most, it's very sad about obviously the d terrible tragedy in Tunisia and it, the terrible impact it had on the country which does rely a lot on tourism yeah. and that is very similar for Morocco saying here that obviously the half term is coming up, the Christmas holidays are coming up. And are up. you doing the lots, terrorist job for them? Lots by of them. British people want mm. to go there on mm. holiday and hopefully information like this might make them feel safer and more, mm. okay. more eager um, to go. Now you were reflecting that Christmas isn't very far I away. Can't, I do. <laughs> Which I can't believe I know, that you're already... I know.